Hi there, welcome to this video on Zebra. I thought I would show you something that you may not have thought about before when using automation. Now we all know that we like use envelopes and LFOs and stuff to control modulation parameters or to modulate any kind of parameter that you feel like you fancy modulating on a synthesizer. What I'm going to do, do today is maybe show you something that's a little bit different and it's using the ARP modulation on Zebra which can be found under the ARP sequence section here. Now this is what I'm going to show you how to do. It's relatively simple, it's just a simple sound but if you put it, like, stick a kick drum in there it's quite effective. It's definitely interesting than, for instance, if we had no modulation on, it would be quite a static sound. So let me just open up another Zebra and I'll show you how I've done that. Okay, so, we've just got a basic Zebra sound. Let me just make it a bit bigger. So, I'm just going to initialise the patch. So we just have a basic... Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is I've just got a G, one long sustaining note, and I'll mute these. So, okay, so we've got that one long sustaining note. The first thing I'm going to do is create an arpeggiated sequence, and so we just go to the arpeggiator sequencer section here. I just put it on sixteenths and I'm just going to turn off every second note really. Did I change it to arpeggiator? No, you need to go to global and change that to arpeggiator. So then we have So you can see it's just playing every other note. And then you can just, for every note that's on, you can just, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to, I'm not really going to seriously consider what I'm doing. Uh, maybe up a fifth. So. And change that to 16 steps. Because it was only going to 8. And then relooping it should go to 16 now. Okay, yeah. Maybe a fifth and a third at the end, maybe, who knows. Okay, a basic arpeggiated sequence, nothing special. Now to make the sound a little bit more interesting, I'm going to add, I'm going to make sure it re-triggers, so it always plays at the same point in the, sec in the, the oscillator's phase. So it basically it re-triggers, it starts at the very beginning every time it doesn't start at a different point in the cycle. Okay, I'm going to add a filter. So a VCF1. And I'm just going to low pass vintage, I guess. Okay, and just to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm just going to add a delay. So go delay 1 in the effects matrix down here. And I'll change the second one to 8th dotted. Make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, let's see if that's maybe just a little bit. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. So that's not too bad. Now that's just, you can't get any more basic than that. Right, but what I want to do is control the cutoff now, but not with the old, the, the normal methods. For instance, I could very easily just click here and go LFO1 and control it with the LFO settings. But in this instance, we're not going to do that. We're going to come to the ARP sequence section, and you see here we've got ARP mod and ARP mod 2. I'm just going to use this and draw in a curve, a positive, at the top, negative at the bottom. So I'm just going to draw in a curve. So 
I guess the easiest way to do it to show you is just go up five. So start at zero, as you can see, zero. Then the next one, make it up to five. Next one, 10, 15, 20, 25, etc. Okay, so as you can see, I've drawn in a, a basic curve there. Then what I do is I come up to my focus control filter and this controls the cutoff, this one controls the resonance. So I just left click on it, find ARP mod because that's ARP mod and that's ARP mod 2. So we want ARP mod. Select that and let's just put it all the way up so you can hear what's going on. So as this goes up, the filter cutoff opens up and then it goes back down again. And you can change the starting point, obviously, so it'll start higher now. Okay, so we've now got a modulation curve drawn in, or an automation curve drawn in, where the app mod is controlling the cutoff now, obviously. All depends where you put this. We want maximum, so we'll just leave it up there for the time being. Now, I want to do the same for the resonance, so I'll do it down here. And just to show you, I'll just do it negative. So again, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so as you can see, I've basically just drawn in the exact same curve. And I just come up here. This one relates to the resonance. Art mod 2. And depending on what it is that you're trying to achieve, where you want the resonance to start. So that's quite cool. I like how it's it's it almost sounds randomized. It's almost like sample and hold actually. Which you can actually kind of create with this when you'd like full, 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 but that's for another day. So so we've now got art mod and art mod two controlling the cutoff and the resonance of this filter. Now that those curves are there, we can use them anywhere else. Anything can be modulated or automated or both. So, for instance, what could we do now? We could use ARP mod, this ramp, to control the rate of the LFO. But before we do that, let's get the LFO to control the tuning. Why not? just for a bit of craziness. So. Okay, and then if we come over here and change this to art mod, and then put it right up, that's now controlling the rate here. Okay, I'm not really feeling that, but you can see, let's take the LFO off of there and put it on the wave. Now, on my specific settings, if I go to oscillator 1, which is what we're using here, you'll see that I've got lots of different waveforms in there. So if I use LFO 1 to jump up and down the waveforms, now you can hear when it gets really hollow, that's it obviously going over the kind of square waves there. So you can get all kinds of effects with this. I like that. And then I could use Art Mod 1 perhaps here. 
to mess around with the tuning. Obviously tunings, you've normally got to be quite subtle with it. Um, but we can do anything with these uh, these modulations that we've set up, these curves. Um, if I turn that up. Maybe change that to 116. So we're now modulating the rate of LFO1, which is controlling the wave of oscillator 1. So it's bouncing around all over the place. So as you can see, it starts to get a bit crazy, and I'm obviously I'm over exaggerating everything. Well, you don't have to be subtle with it, I guess, but most of the time, if you're just looking for something to have a kind of organic movement with it all the time, then obviously the settings that I'm putting in are too high. <laughs> So as you can see, that's, and remember, that's just one oscillator and one one filter being manipulated by the 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 art modulation, and it's just a very simple pattern that I've drawn. And you could you could obviously make that a whole a whole lot more complicated, you know, by adding lots of more notes. See, it's starting to get a little bit crazy. And with a kick drum. And of course, you can do what I'm doing there with it. With with this modulation going on, I can also so I could right click MIDI learn assign that to my keyboard, those two. So now, if I hit, let me just make it a little bit longer. So I'll make it kind of eight bars. Now, to have some real fun, just press record. Make sure right's on. Press record. And as you can see, I've written all the automation to my system there. So it's just starting to get a bit crazy now. Anyway, it was just something I wanted to show you just so that you could maybe utilise different types of modulation sources instead of just using LFOs and envelopes all the time. So I hope you got something out of that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.